All right, everybody, it is time for another one of my world famous tier lists. Uh, this time we're going to be tackling a very important topic, very, very important topic, which is breakfast foods. We've talked about fast food. We've talked about soft drinks. We've talked about snack foods. We covered chain restaurants. There's probably at least one other food related tier list I've done. But today we're going to talk about breakfast foods. Very important topic. Very, very, very important topic. I have a lot to say about breakfast foods. OK, so we're just going to sort of get into this in no particular order. Let's talk about something new that I'm doing, which is a YouTube coaching program. If you're an individual creator or you're a company, really anybody that wants to grow on YouTube, this is for you. Basically, this is a way to download everything that I've learned about YouTube over the past seven years from my brain into yours. There's a pretty common set of challenges that pretty much everybody runs into on YouTube. I've run into pretty much all of them. And with this coaching program, I can help you get past those a lot faster than I did figuring it out on my own. For example, in my opinion, the single most important thing for any channel is figuring out the right niche for your content. Like what should you focus on and how do you talk about it? For example, for me on this channel, once I found that I went from getting, you know, a couple hundred views a video to tens of thousands of views per video, literally almost overnight. You can see it right here. And also the right approach to things like titles and thumbnails and how to structure your videos to keep people's attention, all that stuff that took me years to figure out on my own through trial and error. I just want to help you speed run all of that. I am super excited about this and I'm going to be putting a lot of time and energy into it over the course of the year. And if you want to find out more about it, you can just hit the link in the description of this video. Toast? You want to talk about toast? You want to just talk about toast? Well, how about this? <laughs> Let's start off with a bang here. Some British food, toast and beans. Did you guys know this is what people in, in the UK eat for breakfast? People eat toast and beans. Listen, I understand if it was in World War II, when your shit's getting bombed by the Germans every day and you're like in survival mode and it's like, well, are we going to eat the dog or are we going to dig out, you know, this moldy bread and put some beans on it to make it palatable? I get it. You know, if it's 1943 and the choice is between beans and toast and eat the family dog. Well, in that case, I would choose beans and toast. Um, <laughs> but if it's not World War II. Uh, I'm going to pass and I just want to apologize on behalf of all the British people out there who have had to subject themselves to eating beans and toast at some point. The British think they're living in Great Depression America. Yeah. Yeah. Below F tier. Below F tier. Okay. Let's find something a little bit better. Let's focus on the positive. You know what's fucking delicious? Jimmy Dean sausage. Whether we're talking about it in the pre-cooked links like this or talking about it in the tube, either way. Jimmy Dean sausage, absolutely God tier. If there's something above the S tier, that's where I would put it. Now, I got to say, I do try not to eat pork because, uh, you know, I used to be vegan and then I was vegetarian and then I started eating meat. But I do try to avoid eating animals that I think are nice and cute. Pigs are very intelligent animals and I think they're cute. I like pigs. So I very rarely eat pork. So with that as the asterisk that... I very rarely actually eat pork. I'm still a fan of the Jimmy Dean sausage. The optimism of putting some berries on the box. Yeah, listen, if I eat three raspberries with these sausage links, then that makes it healthy, right? The important part with Jimmy Dean is you got to get the spicy one. The little bit of spiciness in the sausage, that's what makes Jimmy Dean sausage great. Also at Costco, which again, I never buy these because I'm also a very healthy eater, so I never buy them, but you can get the... Uh, the Jimmy Dean like microwave breakfast sandwiches, absolutely amazing, amazing. Everything Jimmy Dean makes is God tier. Now we got to talk about an age old rivalry and I want to know where you guys uh, fall on this. Let's talk about pancakes versus waffles. I want to know where you guys fall on this one. It's interesting because pancakes and waffles, you know, in theory, they're basically the same thing, right? It's like the same type of batter with the same type of toppings for the most part, but it's not the same thing. They're not the same thing. They're different. I can't really put my finger on it. Maybe it's like the texture of the waffles. And if you notice pancakes, little kids love pancakes. Like, have you ever noticed that there are certain things that children love? For example, uh, high C, orange soda, Sprite, lots of different kinds of candy are things that only kids like, but then you grow up and you don't like high C anymore. And I think pancakes are one of those things. Yeah, goldfish crackers, that's another one. That's another thing that kids love. Goldfish crackers and Kool-Aid, kids love that shit. Yeah, waffles have the divots that keep the syrup in place. That could be what it is. I like pancakes just fine, but there's something about them that's sort of like, 
I don't know. I'm not unhappy to eat pancakes. When I was a kid, I loved them, but now it's a little bit underwhelming. I put them on the B tier. You know, if we're talking about the pancakes versus waffles rivalry, even though in theory, they're basically the same thing. To me, like waffles are very clearly a cut above. I don't know why. One thing I'll point out, pancakes depend on where you get them all waffles or fire. Yeah, that's probably true. It's probably true. It's chicken and waffles, not chicken and pancakes. Yeah, but that's different. Th that's not a breakfast food. Chicken and waffles is a different thing. Am I remembering this wrong or did hotels used to serve a fucking grapefruit as if it had any redeeming quality? They totally did. The continental breakfast frequently would have a grapefruit and like who the fuck ever got the grapefruit at the hotel? You would get the cereal or the crappy omelet or, you know, the three lengths of like greasy halfway limp sausage, but nobody was ever getting the goddamn grapefruit. So that's where I stand on the waffles versus pancakes thing. Let's also talk about cereal. Cereal is an interesting one. There's sort of two schools of cereal. On the one hand, we've got you could say like adult cereals, like a good example of adult cereal would be Kashi. The kind of thing that like, you know, you go over to like your friend's grandma's house or something like that in the morning. And she'd be like, oh, do you know, do you boys want some breakfast? And you'd be like, okay. She's like, I have cereal. And all the cereal she has is, uh, is grape nuts, Kashi, fiber one. Yeah. You're like, oh, uh, um, that's okay, grandma. Maybe I don't need to eat anything. <laughs> But I gotta say, when I was a kid, I just fucking hated all those, like, adult cereals. But I've come around as an adult. I'm into, like, the, um, the sort of, like, there's a whole aisle at Target now that's, like, $9, like, artisanal cereals. I'm into those. There's one that I got that's, like, a knockoff of Magic Spoon. I think it's called Three Wishes. It's really good. I don't eat it as cereal. I just eat it, like you know, basically as a dessert, I'll have like a handful of it after dinner, something like that. And so I would say for me at this point in my life, I'm a fan of the adult cereals, which the 11 year old me would be very, very, very disappointed to hear that I was consuming any sort of cereal like this. I'll put it on the A tier. I like these like bougie adult cereals quite a bit now in my old age. So that's where I would put the adult cereals on the A tier. Personally, personally, there's the other school of cereal, which is the little kid cereals like this, which probably it should probably be illegal for these to exist. <laughs> you remember like any of you who are old enough to have been kids in the eighties, like, can you believe that they fed us this shit when we were like six years old, Reese's puffs, tricks, all that shit, lucky charms, like fruit loops. Exactly. Exactly. Like, can you believe they fed us this shit when we were like six years old? I never, my mom was like a hippie. So we never, ever, ever had this shit in our house and she would never let me eat it. And I hated her so much for it because I would see all my other friends eating this stuff. They would be eating cinnamon toast crunch and I would have like oatmeal when I was a kid and I was so mad. I hated my mom because she wouldn't get me fucking Lucky Charms or Tricks. I could only eat it when I went over to my friend's houses with irresponsible parents that fed them this shit. Yeah, dessert for breakfast. It's basically packaged asbestos. I mean, obviously it tastes good. Um, I, I, you know, I never developed a sweet tooth because my mom would never get me like any kind of sweet shit or candy or whatever when I was a kid. So I never really liked this stuff all that much. And I still kind of don't. And uh, I definitely think it should be illegal to give to your kids. I'm sorry if you give your kids cinnamon toast crunch for breakfast. Uh, it's basically child abuse. <laughs> but the real beef that I have is with adults who eat this shit. I'm going to be judgmental here because this is what I do. You know, when forgetting Sarah Marshall, there's that part where like Jason Siegel's character is getting dumped by Kristen Bell's character. He's like standing there naked with his like little limp dick hanging down crying. And, you know, he's got his like giant punch bowl of cereal for dinner. When I think of like adults who eat this type of cereal, that's just what I think of. I think of just these losers who smoke too much weed, probably have like a little tiny limp dick <laughs> eating a punch bowl of cereal. For dinner, the kind of people that think fucking Kevin Smith movies are like the pinnacle of like comedy. That's what I think. I'm sorry. I know it's judgmental, but it's just what I think. So I'm going to put them on the C tier. I don't like it. I'm putting them on the C tier. I don't like it. I don't like it. Now, I'll tell you what is my shit. We got to find a good one, though. Here we go. Here we go. This is my shit right here. This is my shit. The god of breakfast foods is this. A bougie 
artisanal sausage egg breakfast sandwich. Breakfast sandwiches, I feel like breakfast sandwiches should be the next food to get hipsterfied. Every five years or something like that, hipsters discover something and make it really expensive and bougie, but also really good. You know, like they did that with like grilled cheese. They did it with anything involving bacon. Yeah, exactly. Bacon in the 2010s. You can certainly get bougie breakfast sandwiches, but I don't feel like they're like, I don't feel like they're hype. You know what I mean? I don't feel like people are like, you know, boasting on social media about how much they love breakfast sandwiches. And I think they should because they're great. My personal opinion is that breakfast sandwiches are the goat of all breakfast foods because they combine everything good. So you got to get a good roll. Okay. A good brekkie roll cannot be beat. Smashed avo. Well, are you like Australian or something? What words are you using? I don't know. Australians are weird, but it's got everything. A nice roll. It's got some good sharp cheddar cheese, spicy sausage, and then some eggs. It's perfect. Yeah. Even McDonald's breakfast sandwiches are gas. It's true. Even the lowly sausage egg McMuffin, which is probably like the shittiest breakfast sandwich you can get, is still amazing. Like the ones from 7-Eleven that you just heat up in the fucking microwave, amazing even the worst breakfast sandwich is still fucking good so if you ask me the breakfast sandwich goes on the s tier that's what i would say i think it's the goat of all breakfast foods the sun rises with your heartburns no 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 okay this is gonna offend some people this is gonna offend some people but a popular breakfast food which i see people get especially the kind of people that go to duncan for obvious reasons donuts um People eat this shit for breakfast. And uh, I gotta say, I think donuts are very overrated for a couple of reasons. Number one, like I said earlier, I never had a sweet tooth. So I just kind of don't really like sweets that much. Krispy Kreme is mid. Yeah, I think so too. Who eats donuts for breakfast? Dude, lots of people eat donuts for breakfast, which I think is insane, but they do. Lots and lots of people eat donuts for breakfast. They might they might have like three fucking donuts. Like people do this shit all the time. They'll go get their giant coffee, like full of sugar and then they'll get a donut for breakfast. Uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I do not really like donuts very much. I don't think they're great. I think it's basically just like, it's kind of flavorless, you know, it just tastes like sugar. Donuts are definitely a US thing. Maybe, I mean, I, I doubt we invented donuts, but donuts are like kind of flavorless. You know what I mean? It's just sugar and shortening and white flour. There's kind of not, not really anything to it. I think they're kind of crappy. I don't like them. In fact, I dislike donuts so much. I would rather eat adult man-child cereal for breakfast than I would a donut. I just, I think donuts are kind of crappy. I really do. I'm not a sweet guy. I'm a savory guy. Okay. So let's talk about the cousin to donuts, which is the bagel. And then we're not going to talk about bagel sandwiches because I feel like that's a whole other thing. Let's just talk about bagels or as my old roommate from Cleveland would call them bagels. She'd be like, do you guys want to go get bagels? <laughs> Yes, Marnie, I would love a bagel. A bagel is just an acoustic donut. It's true. It's true. They're acoustic donuts. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not a sweet guy. I'm a savory guy. A good bagel is pretty fucking great. And in general, you guys know that I hate New York City. I hate the East Coast in general. But you've heard people from New York brag about how their bagels and pizza are better than anywhere else in the country. And it's true. It's 100% true. New York bagels are unequaled, unparalleled. I don't know why. I don't know what the difference is. People say it's like the water or I don't know what it is, but the bagels in New York, unequaled, cannot be beat. Same with the pizza. I think bagels are pretty goddamn good. Now, I still try to avoid them because it's a lot of carbs, like very calorie dense. Oh, congee. Oh, we'll talk about congee. Okay, we'll talk about that. But let's pretend that calories are um, not a factor. Then I would eat a bagel all fucking day long. Not quite on the same level as a breakfast sandwich, but close. Now, someone asked about congee, okay? Now, if you don't know what congee is, I'll show you. Congee is Chinese rice porridge. The shit is fucking nasty. I used to go to China a lot for work. And I would stay at these like shitty hotels out in the middle of nowhere. It's fucking gross. It's gross. I don't know why. It's just very plain and yucky. It's basically, it's just like rice porridge and you put these toppings on it and it's yucky. It's really, really, really yucky. I hate kanji. So I'd put kanji probably on the F tier. It's like with beans and toast. It's really yucky. But there is a Vietnamese version of it called Jiao which is fucking amazing. Look at this shit, people. Oh my fucking God. I don't know what like the difference is. There's just something about the Vietnamese version of it. It's just a little bit different, a little bit more flavorful. 
for some reason, like I hate kanji and I absolutely love Jiao. I could eat this shit all day long. For anybody who doesn't know, I've mentioned it many times before, but if you're new here, in case you didn't know, my wife's family is from Vietnam. So uh, I eat a lot of Vietnamese food. Jiao, fucking amazing. It's great. Also, did you guys know that pho is a breakfast food in Vietnam? I mean, you could eat it any time of day, um, but pho is primarily a breakfast food in Vietnam. For some reason uh, in America, people decided that it's like a dinner food. Um, and I do love pho, but it's breakfast food in Vietnam, in case you didn't know. So I got time for a couple more. Let's talk about something. Um, I want to know what you guys think about this one. How do you guys feel about oatmeal? I'm a fan. I like it a lot. Um, I would say oatmeal, probably one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite breakfast foods. Oatmeal with fruit, pretty hard to beat. Grits are acoustic oatmeal, yeah. Euro kanji, kind of is. It is kind of Euro kanji. Oatmeal is a neat concept. Overall, it's a six out of 10 for me. Blank canvas, nutrient dense and boring. I feel like you can do a lot with oatmeal though. You just, uh, you know, add the right toppings to it is the key. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on the A tier. I'm generally a big fan of breakfast foods overall. This is gonna be controversial. I know a lot of people probably are going to disagree with me on this. But you remember, of course, back in the 2010s, you remember how it was like bacon on absolutely everything? You guys remember that? Didn't they have like bacon alcoholic drinks, like bacon whiskey or some shit like that? I gotta say, like, I really, I don't really ever, I never understood the bacon hype. Yeah, it, it really is kind of overrated because the problem is that unless it's like, unless you get really lucky, you get one that's like perfectly crisp with like not too much fat on it, then okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But reality is that bacon is never like that. In reality, bacon is like, three quarters fat and it's like all soggy and kind of flavorless and like, yeah, I think it's mint. I mean, there's worse things than bacon, but I, I don't know. I feel like it's just really, really, really overrated. The bacon craze was better than the avocado craze. I personally would rather eat an avocado any day than bacon. Bacon should never be the main event. It's more of a seasoning thing. I agree with that. Bacon is good on certain things. For example, hamburgers, it's good. But I feel like it's a standalone thing. I don't know. I feel like bacon is pretty overrated. I would choose sausage over bacon any day of the week. I'm going to put bacon on the C tier. I think it's pretty overrated. Well, there we go. I could keep going all day because literally I love breakfast food. I could talk about breakfast food all fucking day long. But those are my thoughts. So if you're wondering tomorrow, you know, what to have for breakfast? Well, now you know. Now you know. Here's your handy guide to breakfast foods. Probably have like a little tiny limp dick. <laughs>